Hey guys, so today we are going to make homemade yogurt in the crock pot. Uh, don't mind my eye, it's still healing from the black fly bite. It's a bit swollen, but it's way better than it was the other day. I could barely see out of it the other day. But anyway, so we're going to make homemade yogurt. And it is very, very simple to do. The first two times you do it, you need to be a little bit more cautious than any other time. Because now I basically just have it down to timers. I don't like check temperatures anymore. Let me get everything together and I'll show you how to do it. All right, guys. So... The ingredients that you need to make your own yogurt literally is just, I use whole milk. You can use 2% milk to make yogurt. I've never tried skim milk, um, but you can use 2% yogurt, but you just kind of want to use the same type of milk each time. So if you do whole milk, which is 3.25%, if you do that from the beginning, just keep doing that. Um, so all I use, because I'm continuing to make my own yogurt, all I use is this milk. I need four, I use four liters at a time. You can do half batches, um, which I think the US conversion would be gallon and half gallons. Um, and then I need one cup of yogurt from the last batch of yogurt I made. That's it. That's all I need to make yogurt. You can add things like vanilla into it to give it flavor. Um, we'll get to that later, but the only ingredients you actually need are milk and yogurt. So if this is your very first time making yogurt, then you're gonna wanna run to the store and get yourself plain yogurt. Yes, this is 2%. This is not what I started my yogurt with. This is just an example of just plain Greek yogurt. Um, the ingredients on this as well are just see if we can get it they're just skim milk cream bacterial culture you want to make sure that your ingredients on the yogurt that you're starting your yogurt with um, has no additives so there's no skim milk powder there's nothing just look for something that just has like milk bacterial cultures that's it okay so plain Jane if the only thing available is something that has like berries in it or something like that um, at the grocery store and this is the first time you're making yogurt and there there's only like strawberry Greek yogurt and the only ingredients in it is literally strawberries, cream, and bacterial cultures kind of thing, that's fine. You just want to make sure you're staying away from anything that has added sugar, skim milk powder, like the less ingredients the better. Second, I have completely forgotten on many occasions to grab the yogurt before I add berries or something to the whole batch. So there's many times I've made yogurt and I've accidentally, like we usually do strawberry yogurt. So I'll take frozen strawberries, I thaw them out, I blend them up in the food processor and add them to the yogurt. And there's many times I forget before I add the strawberries to take my mason jar of just plain yogurt to use as a starter for next time. So I've had to grab one of the mason jars that has strawberry yogurt in it to use as the starter for the next one. And it still makes yogurt. So I just, I wanted to forewarn you, it still makes yogurt. So if you forget like I do, which is maybe every like fourth or fifth time I make yogurt, I forget, it's still okay, it still makes yogurt. If this is the first time you're doing it, you really just wanna make sure that um, you're going for like just plain Greek yogurt that has no added sugar, no added ingredients except for essentially your milk product and your bacterial cultures. So that's just my little note. And then all we're gonna do is dump the milk into the crock pot right now. That's all we're doing. Step one, dump your milk into the crock pot. All right guys, so now that we've poured all of our milk into the crock pot. What? Not all the milk in the house, don't worry. Uh, all I'm doing is putting the lid on and I'm turning the crock pot, I'm turning mine onto high. Um, and this is the only thing I have to turn my crock pot on because the little dial broke. So just turning it onto high. Uh -oh. 
And now that it's on high, I'm gonna leave it for five hours. Here is where, if this is your first time making yogurt, you want to watch your temperatures. So if you have like a little meat thermometer or whatever bread thermometer that you can check your temperatures with, you want to watch your temperatures. So the first two times, it's probably like the first three times I made yogurt, I was timing how long it took my crock pot to get to those temperatures, okay? So it takes my crock pot five hours on high to get to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what you're looking for, 185. Once your crock pot reaches there, you're gonna turn it off and walk away. Turn it off and unplug it so no one accidentally turns it back on, but just turn it off, unplug it, walk away. So that's gonna be what I'm doing. Mine takes five hours. The recipe that I used to follow online, she did half gallon batches and it would take her crock pot about three hours on low to get to the temperature. And now if I did this on low, it would take like all day. So high, put it on high for five hours and then we're just gonna turn it off and leave it. So we'll get to that once my alarm goes off in five hours. See you in five hours. All right guys, so it is now one o'clock. For my yogurt that I make at home, I don't add any flavors to it until after it's already made and I'm ready to put it into the fridge. Um, but you can put vanilla in it now. Um, so, but all we're gonna do is we're turning it off. We're gonna turn it off and unplug it and leave it. And we're gonna let it come down to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. If you wanna add a vanilla flavoring to it because you're doing vanilla yogurt, you can do that now. If you're doing a half gallon or if you're doing two liters, you do about a quarter cup of vanilla. This is a gallon or four liters. Stop, hang on. And I used to add a half cup of vanilla extract to this. Um, so, I mean, you can play around with the amounts if a half a cup isn't enough for all of this. If half a cup isn't enough, then just add more. Um, but I'll show you what I do to flavor my vanilla later on in the video. Um, but right now we're literally just turning it off and walking away. If again, if this is your first time ever making yogurt, you are going to want to come back like maybe once an hour just to check on your temperatures. So I know because I've made yogurt so many times in this, I know it takes five hours to cool down to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So for mine, it takes five hours to get to temperature, and then I just leave it, and it takes five hours to come down to 110. So that's where we're at right now. We're just gonna walk away, and I set my timer for six o'clock this evening. The boys put my thermometer in the dishwasher. It just passed 175, um, and that's why it's cracked and it's really <laughs> it's hard to read. But there you go. It's about 180, 185. I can clear the steam off. It's because there's also condensation on the inside. Can we see it? It's kind of right there in between the 175 and 200, so... Perfect temperature. And we're just gonna put the lid on and leave it. All right guys, we're a little past the five hours because we had to make dinner. But, so it's about five and a half hours. It's had plenty of time to cool. And so the temperature. is about one oh about 110 perfect so that's what we want if this is the first time that you're making the yogurt you're going to be using the like the store-bought yogurt that is just plain greek yogurt with nothing in it but um like your cream or milk and the bacterial cultures so this is just from the batch, my last batch that I made. I just fill up one of the one cup mason jars um, full of it. And then I use that to start the next batch.
So the reason we're putting this into another bowl is we're kind of gonna like melt down this yogurt a little bit just so it mixes in with this a little better. So the old yogurt is just kind of pretty well mixed in. There's still some like little chunks of yogurt, but it'll uh, it all kind of melts down. So we're just going to put this back in here. Yes, Joshua? We're just gonna give it a stir to stir it all around. So I normally use a tea towel for this part, but they're all in the laundry. So we're gonna use paper towel and I folded it in half and we're just putting it underneath the lid just to catch any condensation so it doesn't go into the yogurt. Though, yeah, those aren't big enough, but what we do with this is we put it in the oven. Right. And now our oven was on, um, so I've had to kind of cool it down. So I just want to make sure, yeah, it's got to come down a bit more because it's at over 150. And anything over about 115 will kill the bacterial culture. So I'm just going to leave the oven open a little bit for a little while until it comes down to about 100. All right, guys, so the temperature is cooled down enough. So all you're going to do is you're going to put your yogurt into the oven if you have a pilot light that works which is the little light that is in your oven if you have one that works turn it on for the night so you close the door turn the light on walk away and that gives it enough heat to incubate overnight uh, mine doesn't work because I make yogurt too much so I leave it like that for the night I'm raising my voice so you're just gonna leave your yogurt in the oven overnight and depending on how like tangy and potent is what I'm going to call it. So depending on how tangy and potent you want your yogurt, the longer you leave it in the oven, the more strong the yogurt taste is going to be. And it's going to have a little bit of a tang to it. So if you don't want it very strong, maybe only leave it in there for 8-12 hours, depending on how big your batch is. I believe, um, I believe the half gallon or the two liters you're supposed to leave for like 8 hours, 8-12 to 12 hours. I leave mine for more than 12 hours. We leave ours for about 14 to 16 hours and it doesn't have an extremely strong taste, um, but it has like a bit of a tang to it. Um, so we will do that step tomorrow, but it is now seven o'clock at night. And so we're gonna leave it till basically about nine o'clock tomorrow, just after the boys go on the bus to school. And that's where we, I will show you um, the next step because there's about two more steps from here. All right guys, we're a little late to the game this morning. Um, so if you remember we put the yogurt in at seven o'clock last night and it's 11 o'clock in the morning the next day and so I'm gonna take it out and I'll show you a few things. Um, I'll tell you what I normally do and then I'll like show you what you can do and then what I do kind of thing. So, all right guys, so this is straight out of the oven. I haven't even looked at it yet. So that's why you put, um, don't worry, it's not dripping in, but that's why you put paper towel on. See all the 
condensation and stuff. So you just don't want that to drip into your yogurt. So, um, so we don't need the lid anymore and we don't need the paper towel. I'm gonna tell you what I normally do from here. As you can see, all right, you can tell it, the milk has thickened up. It's got a yogurt like texture, okay? What I normally do from here, okay, is I have a steel colander and the biggest bowl that I have, okay? And what I do is I line the colander with coffee filters. And I usually put one in the middle and then it takes about six going around the sides. I make sure that it overlaps the sides because this full, which is basically one gallon of milk or four liters of milk, will fill this entire thing, basically like right up to the edge. So I always make sure that the coffee filters overlap each other, they overlap the bottom coffee filter, and they come over the edge, okay? And what this is going to do is this strains out the whey from the yogurt, okay? So if you like like regular, regular yogurt and not Greek yogurt, okay, then you can just mix this up, throw some flavoring in, whatnot, and go from there, okay? Josh likes Greek yogurt. Joshua likes somewhere in the middle. So I always strain the way out for a few hours, and that won't strain all the way out, but it'll strain a lot of the way out, so that way it's a bit thicker than what it is here, okay? Because you can see, like right here, you can see whey sitting on the yogurt, all right? Now, what I don't normally do, which I'll do for you, is I will mix this up so that we can see like just how um, runny the yogurt is straight out of the oven. Okay, so you're taking all your thick bits of yogurt and mixing it in with the other bits of yogurt, all right? So all I'm doing is stirring it up just to make sure we've got a pretty uniform style of yogurt, okay? So it is fairly runny straight out of here. And actually what I'll do is I'll use the soup ladle, all right? So you can see it's just a basic creamy yogurt, very creamy, all right? So if you like the consistency and the thickness of what you see here, then what you can do is if you added vanilla and you just want vanilla yogurt, jar this. Put it into jars, put it into your Tupperware containers, however you're gonna hold your yogurt, put it into it from here and just put it in the fridge and you're good to go, okay? However, that's not what we do. <laughs> so, this is where things will differ, all right? So, <clears throat> I am going to line the colander. And I'm just gonna take this and put it in here. Okay, and then I'm gonna use a soup ladle and I'm basically gonna put it kind of on the edges so that the yogurt weighs down the coffee filters and puts pressure on the bottom so it's not gonna seep underneath the coffee filters. And we try and do that quickly because it is fairly liquid. And then I just add it to the middle and it'll put pressure on the outsides of the coffee filters so that way they kind of stay close to the edge of the colander and we don't get lost yogurt coming out of the colander because the yogurt will stay in here and the whey will normally just be the stuff seeping out. So, although I've never mixed it up and then done this, so who knows what's gonna happen from here. So yeah, normally I would just take the chunks of yogurt essentially and take it from here, put it in there, empty the whole thing in. But because the yogurt is in chunks, it um, the whey can kind of strain out a lot faster. 
Um, so I guess we're kind of doing a little experiment to see if we can stir it before we put it in here. And so far, I'm kind of looking down in, and so far, so good. I'm just seeing a clear liquid whey come out. So then I just take a spatula, I scrape the sides. Don't worry about the burnt on. It's not burnt on, but it's just the stuck on yogurt. Normally I use my body to help me support this up, um, but we're getting a workout today. Anyway, you want to just get as much yogurt out as possible. Let me just wipe the yogurt splatter off of my face. Then, as I said, this comes pretty close to the top here, see? And then, let's see if we can see down below here there you see the liquid down there so it's got it comes out as like a yellowy substance there so it's all straining out and we aren't getting any yogurt in there yet because it would be like a white cloudy liquid coming out so the way is straining out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that into the fridge and I leave it for hours it could be four hours. If I forget about it, it could be like a day or two. Um, and then it really becomes Greek yogurt when I forget about it for like a day or two. Um, but once it's in the fridge, it's good to go. So you strain your yogurt as much as you want. Um, and you can leave it for like four to six hours. And then if you find that it got too thick, okay, you can take some of the whey and you can add it back into the yogurt. So you could pour your yogurt into a separate bowl or you could take the strainer out because all that's gonna be left in the bowl if you take the, like so here, let's talk. So if you take the strainer out, the whey is gonna be left in the bowl, okay? And then you can take like a measuring cup, take it the whey out of the bowl, so like a cup or two, okay? Or like pour it into a separate bowl dump your yogurt into this bowl and slowly start adding whey in if you want it kind of somewhere in the middle between super runny stirred yogurt and Greek yogurt, okay? So this is where you can play with however thickness of yogurt you want. You can completely strain the whey out, add it in little by little till you're satisfied, okay? And then once this has strained out, that is when I flavor my yogurt, okay? And that'll be our last step. We'll be flavoring the yogurt either later today or tomorrow because it is it's 11 o'clock um so if i get to it before dinner time we'll do it then or before bedtime we'll do it then if not we'll do it tomorrow morning because this is a lot of yogurt to strain out um it's not a big deal if it's left in there overnight as i said it just becomes really thick and then i mean we're good with that uh, but if you're not good with that then you can just add some whey in and make it a little less thick all right so we're just gonna shove this into the fridge and wait. And so that's it. I literally leave it like that in the fridge. All right, guys, the other thing I forgot to show you is how I flavor the yogurt. And it's not that I forgot to show you, um, but there is a step that I do because I use frozen berries and not fresh berries. I take my food processor out and I fill about like, maybe like i think i bring it up to about the four cup mark but that's with the like chopping blade inserted into it all right guys this is all i was trying to explain but english is hard today apparently and that's the only language i speak so this is the end of the bag so I'm just gonna dump all of it in there. And it comes to like, so when it's the full berries, it comes to, that's liters, where's the cups? There. It comes to about like three or four cups. Okay, cause that's three, that's four. And then when I look at it, it's kind of in between the three and four cup mark. So we get all the berries, yes, okay. So I'm just gonna leave this on the counter for like the four to six hours that we're letting the whey strain out of the yogurt. Uh, so we'll just let this sit there. It'll thaw out. 
Um, it doesn't have to be completely thawed, but once it sits here for like four hours, a lot of it is going to be thawed out and we'll just basically blend it up so it's like a strawberry puree. I'm not adding sugar or anything to it. It is literally just frozen strawberries that we're thawing out. If you have like strawberries in the back and you want to use like fresh berries or whatever, use fresh berries. And then again, all I do is just blast them up in the food processor. Uh, and then what uh, the other thing I did, I got a little bit more fancy last year when the berries were uh, more in abundance and not as expensive as they are right now. I would take fresh berries and I would puree some and then chop some up. And so that way you had kind of like, um, like strawberry chunks in your strawberry yogurt. So you can get fancy like that if you want to. All right, guys, it's the next day. I ended up putting these in the fridge because we ran out of time yesterday. So this is one of the last steps of the yogurt. It, it's the last step. Um, but I'll show you um, like what the yogurt looks like and all that. So this is what the yogurt looked like before I went to bed. It had sunk in this much. It hasn't changed because of the amount of whey in the bowl. It basically is hydrating the bottom so if you really wanted it to be thicker than this because as you can see it's pretty um it's still pretty runny in the middle like not runny runny but you know what i mean it's not as thick as the outsides so if you want it to be thicker than that then what you would want to do is empty the whey out of the bowl after a few hours and let it continue draining because i've done that and it will there's still a lot of whey in here that can be uh, strained out if you want to um, but I don't do that this is actually perfect for my family I mix the thick parts with the thin parts as I'm um, putting the strawberries in so what I do is I set this over my sink so I don't get whey on anything that is how much whey is in the bowl it's like a good third full and if you have a freeze dryer, um, I've never done this because we don't have a freeze dryer, but I am pretty sure you can put this into a freeze dryer and powderize it to make your own whey protein. Um, I've tried dehydrating it and it just never, it didn't do anything. Um, so I would suggest trying it in a freeze dryer, but uh, just don't have one of those right now. Um, you can also put these, I was saving this for a while, and you can put it into your smoothies as, like, whey protein. Um, but, like, just to add some extra goodness to your smoothie, but I just dump it down the drain now. Don't you, if you are going to put it in your smoothie, though, don't put too much in, because it does kind of make it foamy. Um, but I'm basically just going to dump this out. I literally just take this... I'm going to scrape the bowl and then dump it. So I'm just going to get the bits around the edges here. And just make sure you're going with how you overlapped the coffee filters. <laughs> or else you might create a big mess. And then all I do is take it and I hold the sides of the coffee filters and then just dump it. That's it. And then I toss these out. So now we have a bowl full of yogurt. You can go through and make sure that there's no coffee filter hiding on you. Um, and now I'm gonna take a jar and I'm gonna fill up my starter yogurt. Just gonna mix it up a little bit so I'm not taking like all of the creamy bits or all not of the anymore. thick bits. See, like this isn't as creamy as it was yesterday, but it's still like not as thick as it could be. That's all I'm saying. And then when I fill it, so I fill it up to this line, okay, because there's like the two lines, one line up here, one line here. So I fill it up to that line. 
Then we set this aside, take the food processor. All right, so with the blade still in, um, it comes to about like a cup and a half. So I'd say that there's probably only like one cup of puree after you take the blade out. Oh no, same amount really, hasn't changed. So it's probably about a cup and a half. Then we just dump this in. So we're just scraping as much out as we can. And then I just mix it in the best I can. You can probably use like an emulsion blender, like the stick blenders. Um, I just quickly stir it in. That's it. Now we're just going to fill up all the mason jars. And then when it gets to kind of be like the remnants, I just spatula it all down here. And I'm going to grab one more jar just in case. So I have three empty jars down here and I just kind of spatula it into these jars. All right, so we didn't need the third. Now we just put the lids on. So I'm just gonna clean off the rims. or make them more messy. Hello. So the one gallon of milk or four liters of milk made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So it made 11 cups of yogurt one of them, which is this guy, is gonna be our starter for the next batch. So there's 10 cups of yogurt that is homemade, strawberry yogurt, no sugar added, and it's done, it can be done within two days, um, but I took three days. So, and it's to our liking, exactly the way we love it. Kids take it for lunch all the time in the mason jars, and it's fresh, so. Okay guys, so it is that easy to make homemade yogurt. Um, it's super easy. And essentially when you make it the first time, start timing things, like record how long it takes to make things. Um, so like I said, the first two to three times I did it, I timed how long it took for my milk to get up to temperature and how long it took to get down. So now all I'm doing is just setting alarms and it's five hours for my crock pot to go up to temperature five hours to get like cool down to the 110 and it's that easy essentially i just timed you know i the first time i made yogurt i let it sit for eight hours and then the next time i let it sit for 12 and then i let it sit for a bit longer to see what taste we really enjoyed that part is all customizable so and then with the whey the first time i made it i didn't strain it at all and josh asked if i could make it thicker and that's when i started straining it the yogurt i've had it sit in the fridge for like two weeks and it's fine you just got to smell it because it'll start to ferment after like beyond two or three weeks and you'll just kind of smell that like alcoholy smell from the fruit and stuff so um just be careful that way i guess yeah no i don't i don't add skim milk powder to this i don't add anything to it to make it thicker you just strain the whey out so what i would do personally is i would like figure out how you want to flavor it blend that up and mix that into your yogurt first and then if you want to thin out your yogurt still then start adding whey in then because when i when you add the strawberry puree it is going to um make your yogurt a little thinner oh the other thing i wanted to say about the timing sorry just count backwards from so like for me it takes 10 hours right so i always want to have my yogurt done by like at least seven o'clock so i just count backwards about 10 hours from there and then because it, it doesn't take long you're literally pouring milk into a slow cooker and then you might add vanilla in on step two and then before you incubate it you're just adding in yogurt to the scalded milk and then throwing it in your oven like it's very hands-off it's just every so often you have to do something and then boom so it's very easy 
and I actually like I find that this yogurt just tastes even more delicious if you're having tummy troubles honestly this homemade yogurt the best now yogurt in general is great for your stomach but I just find with the homemade yogurt and the probiotic cultures and things like that like the bacterial cultures and whatnot it just I don't know like if you're having gut problems we usually like for the adults like Josh loves the yogurt I don't eat yogurt all the time but especially with Jordana if she was having like tummy problems and she wasn't like pooping all the time or whatever we'd feed her some yogurt boom within a few hours she was like good to go and like good to go for a while you know what I mean like it, it would just be like maybe a month down the road that she maybe had another tummy trouble or something but that's yogurt in general by the way if you have a baby and it's constipated feed it some yogurt gets things moving but no we just have now kind of fallen in love with homemade yogurt and we prefer the taste of homemade yogurt josh bought four containers of store-bought yogurt because it was on sale for 94 cents for these giant containers and no one's eating them they're like going for the homemade yogurt first so anyway if you guys end up making the homemade yogurt let me know how you like what the pro like did you think it was that easy do you like the flavor how are you flavoring it things like that just give me some feedback i fell in love with this i found it very easy to do very hands off it wasn't like me sitting on an oven scalding milk and then things like that like i could just be very hands off with it come back periodically set an alarm on my phone go do other things and when my alarm goes off i go and tend to the yogurt so and that i do suggest that set an alarm I'm not always the best for that, but set an alarm. Cause there has been times that like when I'm letting it come down to temperature and then I just go to bed and I totally forget about the yogurt. So do set alarms, but it's very hands-off. It's very easy. And um, yeah, so let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy making homemade yogurt. Have a good day guys.